Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be covering in this video a very important topic and that's your tires and your tire pressure and a way to monitor your tire pressure uh, electronically. I know there's probably thousands of YouTubes out there, but it's probably one of the most important topics if you're in a truck and you're towing a tow vehicle, whether it be a travel trailer, fifth wheel, a boat, um, just a utility trailer, a horse trailer, and that's your tire pressure and monitoring your tires uh, electronically to make sure that if you get in a low pressure situation, it's gonna pre-warn you up front and up front in the tow vehicle and uh, giving you an alarm condition that, hey, something's wrong, okay? Either low pressure, high pressure, or the temperature's high. This is an absolute safety issue and everybody towing a vehicle should have a tire pressure monitor system, which I have here, uh, abbreviated TPMS. I have looked at so many tire pressure monitor systems out there, uh, probably a dozen, everything from TireMate to Guta to you know, all these brands that are out there. And uh, it kept coming down to uh, the display. I want something that I can read. And, uh, and then second of all, I want something that's scanning the tires. And every couple minutes, maybe a few minutes, it would finally connect and actually give you an update on the tire pressure. And that's just way too long, uh, three or four minutes later. So the display was number one. Number two, updating of the sensors uh, periodically. And number three, easy to use. So I looked around, I actually ordered a couple different systems and I uh, just was not happy with them and actually uh, thank goodness for Amazon's uh, return policy um, that I was able to return them. But I ended up getting the TST system here. Um, it's extra money, you know, it's not in the 250 range, you're getting up four or $500 for this. I'll put the link in the description for what I bought. And I need eight sensors. And I saw a lot of the cheaper units, they come with four sensors and you know, six sensors, but I have just a regular setup. I have a truck with four wheels and I have a camper with two tandem axles, which is four wheels back there, eight total. I don't have dualies up front or whatever, but I needed something that does eight tires. So I came across TST and uh, this is what the truckers use. So the other item, in addition to the display and, and so on, being able to read it and updating is that I wanted to configure the diagram to actually what I have. And some of the systems out there, they give you a picture of a tow vehicle and a trailer and you're stuck with what their tire layout is. And I wanted something that I could actually make it look like what I have. So came across TST, highly recommend it. I'll put the link in the description. And uh, it comes with these cap sensors, just screw right on to the end of your valve stem. This is just their basic one. They also have a air through one that if you have steel valve stems, um, you could screw it on and actually put an air chuck on a Schrader valve on top and actually fill the tire through this. But for these ones, I have to unscrew it, put air pressure in, and then re-screw these back on. Um, so that's pretty simple to do. They also have a marine one um, that you can uh, submerge the axles, submerge these in water when you're launching a boat. And it's really slick, uh, just comes with a wrench um, that helps uh, give it some security on threading off and on. And then it also comes with these little brass nuts that go onto your existing Schrader valve. Uh, put that on first and then the cap goes on and that's all there is to it. So very happy with what I chose. The display, as you can see, um, is very easy to read, uh, very bright even in straight sun sunlight. Uh, you could still read it okay. And then it comes with this little silicone pad which you lay up on a dash and uh, clip it in. Uh, also comes with suction mount, typical like a GPS type mount. But uh, I've done a lot of research on this and people charge this up and it usually lasts them four or five days of driving. So uh, I wanted something also that I have another cord hanging there in addition to my GPS, in addition to my cell phone charger and so on. So I could just charge this up. The beauty is it has micro USB standard on here. Just plug it in, charge it up, and it'll last you a few days. So what you're gonna get is the sensors in a box depending on uh, what you've ordered, how many wheels you have. Um, also, the neat thing about this unit 
is I can uh, set up spare tires also to be monitored. So get a couple more sensors, just put them on a spare tire on the trailer, spare tire on the truck. So the first thing to do is pull them out. Um, they already have batteries in them. You don't have to change batteries or anything when you get them, they're all ready to go. And they give you this sticker pad here with, with different stickers for your tow vehicle and then also T for the trailer. So I went ahead ahead of time here and I put number one on the sensor, number two, because you want to remember what pattern it is, left front, right front, so on. So just number one, two, three, and four, and so on. It's pretty easy to do. So I've already programmed them uh, for, for the truck and I need to program the trailer. And so let's go ahead and take the sensor. They recommend keep these a couple feet away. So I'll move those off to the side here, what I'm gonna be doing. And uh, let's go ahead and do trailer one, which is the uh, driver's side front tire on my tandem axle. Okay, so the first step is to hold the set button down. Okay, so you can see I already programmed the truck tires, one, two, three, four. I don't have dualies in the back, um, but it does have the ability to do dual tires in the back. But uh, you can see it's scanning through the different tires and reading the sensors. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna program the rear trailer now, my tandem. So I have four tires back there and I'm gonna hit that. Hold the set button down for a few seconds until it beeps. And then I'm gonna hit the plus button until I go to learn mode. And then I'm gonna hit the set button and you can see the tires here ready to go. And I'm gonna hit the plus button and scan through my tires until I get to the trailer in the back. Just keep hitting the plus button. And I think what I'm gonna do is do the inside tire on the driver's side back. And that will be T1 with, I put the sticker on there, T1. Okay, so I'm going to hit the set button again. All the F's are going to be flashing. And then put the sensor down to the bottom left uh, side of the, uh, the display. And then I'm going to hit the go button. And it just learned that sensor. I'm going to hit the set button again. That saved it. Okay, so that's front tire on the driver's side done. Now I'm going to go to the right side or the passenger side and I'm going to flash that tire over there. And that's my tire right there. So I'm going to hit set again. And now my F's are flashing. Put it near the left hand side. And then I'm going to hit the go button. All right, it read that sensor. Now I'm gonna hit the set button. All right, so that's T1, T2, now T3. So I'm back onto the driver's side. This is gonna be the rear tire on the driver's side. So let's go make it that one right there. Okay, hit the set button. I'm gonna start flashing again. Put the sensor down near the left-hand corner of the display. Very cool. Read that one. Done. And now for T4, which is the passenger side rear, I'm going to hit the plus button and get that one flashing over there. Again, put the set button and then hit my go to read the sensor. It read it. I'm going to hit set. So now I'm gonna go back, hit the back button a few times. And you can see the, uh, the pressure, it's not connected to a tire, so I have an alarm coming in. And this is what the alarm's gonna look like, low pressure, and it's gonna give you that tire symbol that cars usually have. And uh, what I could do is hit any button on here to clear out the alarm, just hit any button, it'll turn the alarm off. So it's 63 degrees. If we keep our house cool in the wintertime, it's going down about 10 degrees last night here in Colorado. And uh, there's my tire pressure. Again, I'm not on the tire. So anyway, I'm all done and programmed. 
So now I have my truck, I have my four tires up front, and this is really cool, my trailer, I have my tandem tires in the back, uh, easy to see. And uh, the next thing is we need to do is uh, set the low pressure for each axle, and then the high pressure for each axle, and then the temperature. I'm gonna leave it to default, it comes from the factory 158 degrees, which I've done a lot of research, and they say even truck tires, 18 wheeler tires, car tires, uh, leave that at 158 degrees, so I'm not going to screw with that. Uh, but the next thing is I'm going to set the low pressure and the high pressure per axle. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is uh, go look at your truck and your car and your tow vehicle and uh, look on the side of the tire and it's going to tell you the recommended pressure for the tire and that's when the tire is cold. Um, just sitting there, uh, normal temperature. And uh, also on there, another quick note is that uh, you want to look at the date code on your tires and it's recommended that you don't go anything older than seven years uh, to avoid, uh, you know, issues down the road. So make sure the date code is less than seven years. If it's over seven years, then uh, most likely everybody recommends to get new tires on the vehicle. So on my truck, uh, my tires are 80 pounds when they're cold and my trailer is 50. So it's recommended that your low pressure be 10% lower than your actual rating on the tire. So if I take 10% off of my eight, it leaves me about 72 PSI uh, for my low pressure on the truck. And then my high pressure, they recommend going 25% above that rating. So on an 80 PSI, then add 25% and makes it uh, 100 PSI. And then on a trailer, my trailer tires are 50 pounds. Uh, so take 10% uh, off of that, that leaves it about 45 pounds on the low pressure side. And then my high pressure side, if I take it times 1.25, add 25% onto the 50, that comes out to be roughly 62 PSI. One thing I found is that if you try to set the high pressure setting on an axle, that won't go below 100 PSI. So what you have to do is go to that axle, set the low pressure setting first, and then after you do that, go back into the high pressure setting, and then you'll be able to go down from 100 down to 62 pounds or whatever you're gonna be setting at the uh, high pressure. So, so you need to do that. Uh, it was a little quirk that I found. And there's my low pressure, so I hit the plus button. There's my low pressure. I'm gonna hit set on that. And now here's my front tires on the truck. And my low pressure, again, was 80 pounds, and I need to take 10% off of that, so let's make that 72 pounds. My 72 pounds of my front tires of the truck. All right. Now I'm gonna hit my go and get back to my rear tires. Again, on the truck, I'm gonna make those 72 pounds. All right, hit the set button. Boom, done. Now I need to go to the trailer tires and make those 45 pounds in the back. So I'm gonna hit my go and get back onto the rear tandem axle, that'd be the front one, and make this 45 pounds. There we go. Hit the set button again. Set button again. Now I just need to do the rear wheels of the tandem. Hit my go. Scan back and get to the rear and make that 45 pounds. Just about done programming. This hasn't taken long at all. All right, 45 pounds. Hit the set button. And um, that's it. All right, I'm setting the high pressure. You see, here's my trailer tires. I wanna get that down to 62 pounds. Hit the set button. Hit the set button again. Hit my go until I get now to the rear axle. Here's my 62 pounds high pressure, now my back. 
Take that down to 62 pounds. Done. All right, so the next thing is just to go out to the truck and the trailer and screw on these little sensors uh, using the wrench. And again, put on the brass nut onto the Schrader valve. That's gonna screw on top of that. They do give you extra O-rings if you change the batteries out. These are like regular like garage door opener batteries that are inside here. So you got a couple extra O-rings. And then inside uh, the valve, uh, in case you need them, they give you the smaller ones too that go into the uh, fitting for the Schrader valve. Um, you'll also get a repeater. So here's the repeater, and it's just a positive and negative uh, 12 volts DC connection somewhere. And I'm going to put this up into the bay of the trailer. A lot of people do that. And I have uh, keyed power from the truck coming in into my DC to DC charge controller. But the only time it's powered up is when the truck is on and the seven pin connector is plugged in. So I think I'm just going to put that in and we'll go do that. Screw the sensors on and uh, pretty much that's it. All right, so first thing you want to do is uh, take your tire pressure up, check it. Um, so I am at 80 pounds right now and I like using this trucker type tire gauge. Um, release the pressure and then simply just push it on one time like that and then it reads it and then release the pressure i'll put the link the amazon link in the description for this tire gauge which really works well then after that i've got the little brass nut on there screw on the sensor and then repeat this on each of the tires and then this brass nut on here to give you this little wrench back it up and then tighten it on to the uh, it's kind of like a jam nut and that's it so let's go do the other seven tires all right so let's take a look at the display here and uh i'll let it cycle through i got the truck tires all done up and it's another cold day here 74 pounds per square inch and uh, they call for 80 but it's pretty cold 32 degrees right now uh, those should warm up and then it'll go over 80 it'll be right at 80 all the sensors are mounted and uh, this is working really well and it's pretty amazing the distance I'm probably 50 feet away but uh, yeah working really good reading the temperature, reading the pressure, cycling through each tire every five seconds. And then uh, I'm going to get two more sensors for the spare tires. And uh, they will be in the rear of the truck and the rear of the trailer where they're mounted. All right, tap the positive and negative. Uh, this is the input of my 12 to 12 DC, uh, the DC charger. Um, when the key comes on in the truck uh, over my seven pin connector, uh, trailer plug uh, this becomes energized so I just tapped my repeater right off of those two inputs so the only time my repeater is going to run is when uh, the keys on on a truck tuck the wire up around the corner and then mounted my repeater up here in the front bay probably don't need it but uh, I'll give it a shot here and I could always extend it and relocate it somewhere else if it doesn't quite get the signal out but Again, I, I probably don't need it. I'm maybe 30 feet away from the, uh, 30 to 40 feet away from the sensor. This is really made for like 18 wheeler tractor trailers and that sort of thing to get the signal up to the front of the cab. So again, they give you this little silicon pad. I could set it up here on the dash and just sit it in the bracket. Again, I don't have to have power going to it. It'll charge up and I'm hearing it runs for five days solid i did notice that it after a while it does shut off itself and then when you tap it or if it sees any vibration it turns uh, the display on which is a really nice feature i wasn't aware of that and i do have my stickum thing here if i want to obstruct my view up in the windshield but uh the other place i have this is a ford f350 uh super duty turbo diesel and I have this little flat square right here, and I was thinking possibly mounting it like right, right in that area. 
that might be kind of neat and they do give you a piece of velcro so that's what i think i'm going to do i'm going to mount it right there a couple other notes uh you can have up to four different trailers on this display and i have two other trailers i have a 12 foot utility trailer then i have a 23 foot flatbed uh, that has tandems on it and then i have my uh, utility trailer that has a single axle but uh, you can see one denotes trailer number one and then you could set trailer number two three four um, and just buy sensors to put on each wheel and program them that way. Um, the other thing I really like is this display, as I mentioned earlier, it takes standard micro USB to charge it, nothing proprietary. And the sensors themselves take CR2032 batteries, which are real common for garage door openers and that sort of thing. But uh, I really like that part. Um, don't buy these at the grocery store, go on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description for the TST unit and also the batteries. And uh, they're a lot cheaper when you buy them through Amazon in a, in a pack like this than buying them at the grocery store. Also, when the sensor battery uh, gets low, uh, the tire, when it flashes, is gonna have a symbol come up that is a low battery indicator on that sensor. That's really nice. Hey guys, once again, I can't stress how important it is to have a TPMS system on your vehicle, to monitor the vehicle you're driving and also the tow vehicle. And the amount of danger that you might create by blowing a tire out on a highway at high speeds, going 60, 70, 80 mile an hour. Uh, so it's so important to get one of these. Bite the bullet, spend the money, uh, go onto my link in the description, buy that one, buy something and get it on your vehicle right away before you put the kids and grandpa in the truck and uh, head down the highway uh, for your vacation. So appreciate everybody's support of the channel. Well over 62 videos now posted. Uh, check out my other playlists on e-bikes, solar, diesels, uh, RV remodels, and so on. And uh, appreciate everybody's support too. We're well over a thousand subscribers on the channel and growing. So please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.